Um, <laughs> I've known our next storyteller for a few years. Um, and I, I didn't know this about him, his secret fact. Um, and it sort, of, it sort of makes me want to mess with him, but I don't know that I have the, I don't know that I have anything that I can. Um, anyway, our next storyteller's secret fact is that people who wear pointy shoes intimidate him. <laughs> Please welcome, with your best ever jazz hands, Jeff Harry. Well, what's up, everyone? Um... Why are the stories so good, Marsha? They're so good. Um, I just want to say thank you to Khan and Owen and Nick and Charlotte because they're just so good that I'm like just honored to just be in this. So, um, and before I start, I have to share this with you, Marsha. I was going to wait and share it personally, but I'll just do it right now. Why not? Um, I shared this story two years ago, I think May of 2020, and a lot has changed in those two years. But that was the story that I shared is the most embarrassing story of my childhood. And after I shared that story, I was not scared to share other stories. So a lot of all the videos and the thing and the weird stuff that I do now that I put out is because you got me to share this first story. I didn't even realize that until I was. So yes, this whole, like, I agree. I love Netflix, but I feel that's like more of a me space. But like when you're in storytelling, as Charlotte was sharing, you're in like this we space. So, oh, all right. So uh, let's do this. So I'm 12 years old. It is the first day of seventh grade. Remember that? I've always been sitting through, I've been sitting through so many periods of class and I've been waiting, like waiting for recess so I can play Foursquare. I'm so excited to play Foursquare that I'm singing a song about Foursquare as I walk down the hall and I'm like, gonna play some Foursquare, gonna play some Foursquare, gonna play some Foursquare. I'm outside on the playground, ready to play four square, but no one else is on the square. And you can't play four square with one square. It's literally in the name. Everyone is on the asphalt, just talking. Why is everyone just talking? So we go over to Matt Johnson and I ask, hey, you wanna play some four square? And he's like, no. But did you know that Ryan Matthews is going out with Ashley? They made it to first base. I'm like, first base. So I look over the baseball field and I'm like, no one's there. No first base, man. Kissing. Also, do you know that Mark is now going out with Sarah? Uh, so do they want to play four square? Because that's too many people to play. It's only four people. Apparently... No one wants to play Foursquare because everyone is playing this new game called being cool. What I don't know about being cool is that certain people have already been selected as the cool kids. Was there an election? I didn't receive a mail-in ballot. This new game is rigged. Certain people are already anointed as the king and queen of cool, which did not include me. I just want to play Foursquare. But after so many recesses of sitting in the square on my own, I'm lonely. So I think, okay, okay, I'll play the cool game because I just want to belong. I'm living in a very white Chicago suburb. I am one of maybe 30 kids of color at my school, probably less. I'm an awkward, nerdy, Vincentian, Caribbean, Black, Filipino kid. So what do I need to do to be cool? First off, I need, to, I need new clothes. So I buy these Z Cavarici acid wash jeans, some Gerbo shirts. But the last thing I need, I can't get. Because all the cool boys have long, long luscious bangs, bangs so long, they flick them out of their hair. And the way they say it, they're like, excuse me, I can't hear you right now. 
because I have these luscious bangs. I'm black and Filipino. My hair doesn't do that. It's shaped like a microphone. So I steal my sister's Vidal Sassoon mousse. I pull her so much into my hair to push it down so that it would freeze, creating a frozen bang. Little did I know that the mousse dries up over time. And by fifth period, this frozen bang turns into a raccoon's ass growing out of my forehead. And I'm like, why, hello? Hello, oh, ladies, ladies, ladies. Want to go to the dance? No, no, maybe, maybe later. I even brought a picture. Look at this. Look at these bangs. I'm trying to grow these bangs down across the eye to create that secrecy. Not happening. All right. So, so one day, someone comes up to me and says, "You know, you should date Hannah. She's Asian. You're Asian." so you'd be cute together. That's how white my school was. They are pairing up the races. So I'm like, okay, okay. If this is what makes me cool, all right. So Hannah gives me a triangle note folded to start our relationship. In the note is a map explaining that we will be exchanging two triangle notes per day also, we will be having a call every night at 7 p.m. exactly. Do you know how hard, how hard it is to fold a triangle note? Do you know what's even harder? Trying to figure out what to write in a triangle note, especially after you just saw the person earlier in the day and you have never spoken to a girl before. She calls at 7 p.m. on the dot and asks, how was your day? And I'm like, it's inside the note. I wake up in the morning with anxiety, trying to figure out what I will write her because nothing has happened between 7 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. note exchange. Then two weeks later, she just breaks up with me. Wait, what? I wrote all those triangle notes. So now three quarters of the year has passed. I got the clothes. I got the frozen bangs that still look like a raccoon's butt. I've now dated and I'm newly single. Hello. Now I am in. Now I'm cool, right? I got to be cool now. And then Matt Johnson comes up to me and he's like, you going to Ryan's pool party? because everyone who's anyone is going to be there. That's it, that's it, that's it right there. If I go to the party, then I'm in. I will finally have arrived. It's invite only though. Invite only? What does that even mean? You have to know somebody already to get in. We're 12, what is happening here? Really? So I spend the whole week begging the in people if I can go with them. I finally ask Antonio Santiago and Joey Villa Gomez if they're on there. Hey, what's up? If I can go with them and they say, maybe, maybe. So for the next two weeks, I do whatever I can to get them to say yes. I bring them lunch. I carry their book bags. I become their triangle note courier. Finally, the night of the party is here and I'm going. I will be going to the best party of my lifetime. So I put my acid wash jeans on. Oh, acid wash jeans swim trunks because they had a pool where I could play. I douse myself with half a bottle of Dracar Noir, you know, $20, a lot of, very expensive. And then Antoine's mom drives us. And I'm in the car, quietly singing to myself, trying to act cool. But I'm singing, going to the party, going to the party, going to the party. It's already dark, but hot enough that the pool is going to be awesome. There's already a crowd of people gathering in front of this house as we pull up, because it's the party of the year, okay? 
we get dropped off 20 feet before the entrance and we come out of the car all cool, doing a smooth, I'm cool walk. I throw my towel over my shoulder. And then as we get 10 feet to the entrance, we hear people arguing. And Carl and Keith and Ron and a few others are trying to get into the party, but they aren't being let in. Now, Carl, Keith, and Ron happen to be black like me. And people start pushing each other and start shoving. And then someone says, get the fuck out of here. We aren't letting any niggers in this party. I feel this gut punch. Because I'm thinking, I'm a nigger. Are they gonna let me into this party? My heart sinks inside my stomach and I feel as water had filled up to my knees and instantly froze. I'm five feet from the entrance and I can't move a muscle. Antonio turns to me and says, come on, we'll be fine. And I'm thinking, no, you'll be fine. I'm going to be left out of this party to sit on the curb. I don't even know where I am. I don't even, I don't know how to get home from here. So I slowly stumble up to the front and a group of white guys Look at Antonio, look at Joey, and then they look at me. Is he black? And I just stand there looking at them and I don't say anything. And Antonio goes, nah, he's Latino. And with a nonchalant attitude, they just wave us through. It's no big deal for them, but for me, this is, this is everything. A wave of relief comes over me. And as I'm crossing the threshold through the door, I'm anticipating this immense amount of joy to just fill me because I'm in. But as soon as I walked in, I feel I've abandoned myself on that curb. There are 50 people in the party talking and laughing and I can't hear a sound. I'm just filled with so much disgust and shame and I just want to hide. So I go to the pool where no one is playing and I just sink to my neck in that, that freezing water, thinking I gave it all up for this. I feel lonelier than I've ever felt in my entire life. So after that day, I gave up being cool. I stayed in my basement and I played weird games that I made up. And then at some point I was like, I think I'm gonna invite some of my friends to play my, my weird games in my basement. And word started to get out that if you go hang out at Jeff's basement, you don't have to be cool. Every Weekend, we make up games, pile up mattresses to build forts and throw ourselves at them, which became my new version of Foursquare. It is the most fun I ever had playing these ridiculous games in my basement. And I realized that the thing I've been searching for the entire time is right here. 
when I'm with people I like doing the stuff I find the most fun for me, that is where I belong. Jeff Harry. Um, when Jeff brought the story to me, it was kind of like, oh, here's this fun, funny story. And then, you know, as is often the case when I'm working with storytellers, we do a little bit more digging, a little bit more digging. And then, you know, we pull, okay, what's this really about? And I have to say, it's kind of one of my favorite things that happens in a show when we have a story where it's just like, oh, fun. Are you enjoying this fun story? Doof. Actually, it's really sad. But then it's like redemptive again at the end. And I feel like everybody after is just like, I'm exhausted and I don't know what I've been through, but it was something good. Um, and, and, and like kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier, right? When you do the thing that for you is so fun, that's actually the thing that other people like and you're happier doing it. Um, I also, uh, I wrote down two little notes when, when Jeff started. One was the thing he said about, which I'm like going to quote you about this all the time, Jeff, of being like TV, I love TV, but TV is a me space um, and storytelling is a we space because it's, you know, that thing we mentioned right at the beginning of all of our brains connected, but also there is this experience. Like I feel it in this Zoom room now and I feel it when we have a, a show live that it's like everybody kind of staggers around. Like we've really been through something together. Like I feel connected to every one of you people I can see the people who are just a little black square with a name like I'm like I love you right now um the other thing is I challenge you to ever see a four square um court or just hear the word four square without in your head being like gonna play some four square gonna play some four square <laughs> I went to pick my kid up from school the other day and realized she has a four square thing. And I was just like, I'm going to play some four square. It's now in all of our heads forever. It's been in my head for two years.